refinement, taking little notice of decadence, may often underestimate the extent to which mosh pits are driven by envy. For they are playgrounds in which the point of the game is to mutually fool ad nauseum. The only way to get a sense of bringing everyone down to a common level. Solidarity at all costs means the repression of chaos and individuality. The jitters of confusion eventually merge into a hybrid beast of quavering pomposity. A need for affirmation is the bypassing switch that turns off any chance of intelligibility within the drama sphere of undulating clones. Ladders of relatability tend to become perverted forms of social support in the cults potentiated by their infrastructure to the degree that members of mobs can't tolerate silence thus approximating a dimension which yields no liberty in the Tower of Pure Babel. A dogma is rigid and brittle in proportion to its underlying fears, each justification reflexively spurting up one after another to become more violently territorial of its petty means. I find it fascinating and tragic to observe the spectacle of a mind that simply won't congeal. The participants believe they must speak even louder to make the non-participants understand, failing to grasp that sensitivity belies antennae of discriminating openness, which sounds impossible for those lost in a monotone, or what I like to call low-resolution thinking. Skeptical of asking useless questions, are they who never pause to examine the criteria by which questions may be determined as such, whose perception of utility is equivalent to immediate gratification, that we inquire at all as human beings, I do believe, theorize, and ponder about quite consistently, implies a horizon-reaching mechanism. Even if agreement cesspools are the factory in which the desperate level out the idols of their answers and become stagnant puppets of idiocracy. The indifferent bother the passionate, and the herd persecutes the individual, because tradition on its own and left to its own devices has no capacity to anthropomorphize, to think or see, and emerges all the more unwieldy as comparisons are extinguished to accommodate a moment's praise for the sake of stable ground. The inert loses itself and ultimately amounts to the denial of purposeful autonomous action, for it has been relegated as the supreme danger. Superstition exists in a myriad of forms and ways, but, I do declare, it has never been anything more than the playing shadow of fear conducting its shadow and its show in the perpetual distraction from death, the clinging to custom and uh, artifice and simulation. Familiarity breeds contempt in that it reminds one of all the negotiations one has made in life for the sake of security. The cage seamlessly 
designed by the awareness of paths not ventured. Domestication, paradise deposed by guilt, the fall from Eden, I find it all quite a useful parable. One thing is for sure, these echo chambers are not assembled by those who are eating of the fruit.